Hey everyone, welcome to the Get Your Life Together Girl podcast, the ultimate blueprint to self-love and inner peace. I'm your host, Danielle Van. As a cognitive behavioral therapist, a life coach, meditation teacher, and author, I've spent my life studying and learning from the stories that make us human. It's my passion and goal to help you shift your mindset and create a lifelong revolution by teaching you about your mental health, emotional intelligence, and handing over the life lessons you wish you would have learned, but maybe haven't learned up until now. These are the powerful conversations to guide you into empowering who you are while living your most grounded, authentic, and life. Does drama have a way of finding you? It does for many people, but it doesn't actually have to be that way. If you find that drama is everywhere that you turn, perhaps it's the environment and the people that you're around, as well as your mindset. So today, you and I are taking a one-on-one deep dive into detoxing the drama in your life and getting very keyed into what could possibly be the biggest issue. So let's get right to it. The Get Your Life Together Girl podcast starts right now. Oh my goodness. I know that I have a few people that I've worked with in the past and even people in my life who find themselves constantly saying that drama finds them. And every time I hear this, I kind of laugh because in some scenarios, in some situations, you may actually have a way of bringing drama into your life without even realizing it. And that's what I want to talk about today is what is your mindset and who are the people you are around and can you make the connection in those things and can you maybe downgrade the drama by stepping away, by changing the thought patterns and even identifying how you may be adding to the situation. So I have to say this because this is very true. We often deny our role in many circumstances, even if we're enabling the circumstance. We often step back. We won't take a stand. We call ourselves sensitive or the poor me mentality. And we don't look at how certain situations and even people impact us. And when we do not actually take a stand for ourselves in our lives and change our perspective of what we're experiencing, guess what? It feels like drama. And so if you are someone who has maybe a bit of this certain set of personalities, you may find that drama finds you, even though your relationship to it is actually part of the problem. Sorry to say it. I know when I say that in session, people look at me and they're like, what are you saying? Of course, I would not welcome drama. And I would say, yeah, sometimes we do, right? Sometimes we do. So if you are someone who loves to rescue people, guess what? You like drama. You welcome it. If you are someone who rescues people because you feel like it's better to help, guess what? You grow tired. You grow tired of people's complaints. You grow tired of the negative impact. You get tired of feeling like all you ever deal with is problems. It's really like being a quiet martyr, right? You feel bad if you can't help. You feel bad if you do. And in that situation, many times the people that we're rescuing become dependent upon us And then we create this unhealthy codependent relationship and that can play into our ego. And guess what? Drama, 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 drama. You have to decide, are you creating spaces where drama can thrive or are you creating spaces where help is given? There's an important line there and it's really all about the response that is happening within you and within the circumstance once they play out. Another big aspect that happens to create drama is when you see yourself as a victim, right? When you are powerless, helpless, hopeless, when there's little that you can do or little that you're willing to do 
to change your circumstance. You're not open to thinking, guess what? You are a victim, even if you wouldn't call yourself that. And that, of course, is going to bring drama. It is one of those places that a lot of people really feel like they don't have options and choices, and yet they do. They're just unwilling to make them. And in that aspect, of course, drama is going to thrive. And it's necessary to kind of look at the relationships, the roles, the circumstances, whether that's in a work environment, a family environment, a best friend, whatever it might be, if you find yourself constantly saying, nobody loves me. There's always a problem. I can't ever make any choices. I'm always the issue. Guess what? You're playing the victim and it is going to create drama and allow drama to thrive. There's also a space where drama really gets going, and that is where you are the perpetrator of drama. This is someone who sees themselves as the reformer because they push things on people. They pressure or persuade people to, you know, take action. That really helps them. And they hand over unsolicited advice, right, thinking that they're really helping. But what they're doing is creating situations where they aren't really looking at how to help someone, but instead forcing what they believe on others. And that can cause tension, frustration, resentment. And it's places where a lot of people get frustrated and they leave friendships and relationships and then we step back and have all of this drama and, and wonder, you know, how could they do this to us? Maybe you also play a role in the situation. So let's talk about how we can reduce drama. If you get into a place where you begin to choose to see and understand how you react and respond to the world around you, to the relationships that you have, you have the power to reduce drama. So how do we do that? One, we have to acknowledge the role that we play. This is where we have to have a bit of emotional intelligence, emotional maturity to recognize that it takes two to tango, right? And that we're responsible for our reactions. And if we can't own them, if we can't see them, then we most certainly cannot change them. So how are you showing up? The next thing that we have to do is seek to understand. If you find that you are experiencing a lot of drama in your life or people are responding to you in a way that is not working for you, instead of becoming emotionally reactive, you have to break down the facts of the moment. What is the role that I'm playing? What is the role that they're playing? How can we get into a space that we change the dynamics between us? You know, if I'm having an attitude problem or if somebody else is having an attitude problem, What's the role? What's the problem? Is there some assumption to it? Am I not looking at the full situation? And then from there, we have to learn what is happening and use our findings to change the rhythm of things. If you're always in a situation where things aren't working, then you have the opportunity to dig deep and to change the things that are happening around you. Now, I gave you a bunch of things just now that some of you may be scratching your head, ready to turn off this podcast and say, screw off. And that's fair. I get it. But there are times that situations really aren't about us and we aren't the part of the problem. We are actually just in witness of the issue and we're connecting to it in an unhealthy way. And so if we are in those experiences, we can look at our environment, the relationships that we're interacting with, and decide maybe it is time to limit time with people who cause drama in our lives. And if we have this feeling that there is drama, but we aren't really crystal clear about who those people are, or if we need to limit them to be a little bit happier. Let me give you now some things that you should be keying into, right? Some things that you should be looking at and making decisions around to decide if these friendships 
romantic relationships, whoever it might be, are really worth the time and energy that they demand of you. In no particular order, here's what you're really looking for. It's that one person or maybe multiple people who thrive amid chaos. What I mean is not that they use their resiliency to get them through their experience, but it's those people whose lives are revolving doors of crises, right? They call it bad luck. But honestly, it's not bad luck most of the time. It's often a <clears throat> pattern. Brace yourself <laughs> because you may be screaming right now, but here's the thing. Patterns are repetitive motion towards, you know, continued action. And so if you're constantly caught in a storm, you might be the one feeding the storm. And if you're around people who are constantly in turmoil, you have to step back and say, maybe you need to handle your BS because I don't want to be in absolute mayhem all the time because that does rub off on you. So if you are constantly in chaos with someone, you may need to look at their patterns. So that's something to identify. Another situation to really look at is those people who are constantly stirring the pot. They gossip nonstop. You know that most of it are lies or embellishments. They're pretty petty. They're trivial. They enjoy talking about other people. And you know damn well that when you are out of that room, they are also doing the same about you. And the worst part of all of it is that they enjoy getting the rumor mill going. If you are around these kind of people, know that they are starting, stirring, and continuing drama at almost all turns. And you have to decide whether that works for you mentally and emotionally, because generally it doesn't. It causes us to feel negative, to breathe in toxic behaviors, and to constantly feel like the world is not happy. I mentioned this next one before as a trait that maybe you are doing or taking on, but it obviously is available for other people to do as well, <laughs> and that is to play the victim. So what does that look like on the other side if you're not the one doing it? It's that space where someone never takes responsibility for their actions. They're always the victim, always at the mercy of other people's terrible responses. It's exhausting, right? They drain your energy. You feel like you have a headache when you leave them. If that is the experience that you have, you may want to cut your losses and limit your time with them just to have your own peace. It's the people that absolutely feel like Everything is out to get them and nothing is going right. And again, you can't have peace in those situations. The next one is those people who are constantly criticizing everything and everyone around them. Oh, this is really hard to be around. And I actually have somebody in my life like this who has never had a good meal, never had a good hotel, never had a good vacation, never had a good anything. And if you feed into it, it is insanity, right? Because it just grows. It's this unnecessary nitpicking that isn't helpful and is often destructive to the moment. They pick and find fault in everything they do. And that includes you, right? You can't wear the right thing. You can't do the right thing. You can't be the right thing. And that tears down your self-esteem. It breaks everything within you after a certain amount of time. And we begin to think that there's something wrong with us. We take that label of not good enough. But instead, it's really the mindset of someone that you're around. And it is absolutely best to distance or completely cut off this relationship because nothing is ever going to be good enough, at least until they do the work to change themselves. Next, it's the people who every single word out of their mouth is negative. Ugh, right? <laughs> it's so hard to be around someone who is negative all the time. They get on a tangent. 
It runs wild and nothing you say or do is positive. It's hard to keep your spirit high when someone is absolutely berating every moment. It's so difficult. It can be soul destroying. It can be exhausting when all you hear is a negative. Now, of course, we have a negative bias in our brain. So we're looking for what could possibly rock our safety. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about people whose mindsets are set on the world is bad. There's nothing good that's ever happening. I am only willing to look at life as the half empty glass. It is a space that can be very destructive and it is something that absolutely rubs off. It is not something that you want to continue to engage in and it's necessary to allow yourself space. Now, this next one is something that a lot of people don't think about, but it is something that you should be thinking about. (laughs) And it is the people who have zero respect for other people's boundaries. Boundaries are absolutely necessary. I know if you've listened to this podcast in the past, you know that I hone in on boundaries. It is how we tell people that we are willing to be treated It is a space of how we show people to treat us. And if you are around people who are constantly overstepping your boundaries or don't have respect for your personal space or your decisions or who you are, you do not need to be around them. If someone makes you feel uncomfortable or disregarded, guess what? They do not give a damn about your boundaries. This is a non-negotiable in relationships. It is about respect. If you cannot hold a boundary with someone or someone cannot hold it with you, there is no safety. There is no trust. There's no way to grow the relationship because you're always on guard to something bad coming to be. And speaking of trust, this is a big one. If you're around someone that you can't trust, guess what? You probably are in a space where drama is ensuing. You know, if you don't feel like someone would have your back, it's okay to step away. If you don't think that someone doesn't have your best interest at heart, you can't trust them, you don't need to have them in your life. If someone has proven themselves to be untrustworthy, they've betrayed you, they've lied, they haven't built trust with you, it is necessary to realize that they are a drama bomb really waiting to go off over and over and over again. If you can't trust someone, again, there is no safety and we can't build anything. This next one may surprise you. You are aware that it causes you to feel a certain way, but you may not be aware of how much drama it actually creates. And it is those people who are extremely self-centered. Relationships are a two-way street. They are not 50-50. They are 100%, 100%. And if you are around someone who is willing to throw you under a bus in order to not feel something or to not be caught in their words or to not take responsibility, you are around someone who you should not be around. They are drama in walking form, (laughs) okay? Self-centered people do not have your interest at heart. They do not have a desire to put you first. They don't have empathy, sympathy, compassion. What they have is one interest and you are not it. Okay, so if you're around somebody who is extremely self-centered, understand that they are not going to provide a healthy space for a relationship. They're going to provide drama. That is one that really rocks people because they think, well, I know that that person's self-centered and I know I don't like it, but I can't really visualize my life without them because they're my best friend or they're my cousin or my sister, my brother, blah, 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 right? It's a matter of what kind of impact is that person creating in your life? How are you really navigating their experience in your experiences, So think about that and do you need to step away? The next one is those people who hold grudges over the stupidest things and they ask you 
to stay in a toxic cycle of paying for it over and over and over again. This is a cycle that will never make you happy. Those people who hold on to anger and resentment, who refuse to forgive or move on, are trapped in their experiences. And when they're trapped, they get more dramatic, right? So if you are around these people who hold grudges over the smallest little things, remember that life is too short for any grudge and that it's always best to cut out the toxicity in your life. The next factor is something that is a little bit more advert when it comes to drama because it's the outcome that creates the drama. But when people are inconsistent in their reliability and the way that they show up, it often creates drama. So it's the people that change their minds or they flake on plans or they never follow through on their promises. They're just simply not reliable. This creates uncertainty in the relationship, which creates drama. Okay, so if you're around these kind of people, it's not as bad as somebody who is constantly negative or somebody who is talking crap about everybody. It's a little different. But, you know, when somebody doesn't honor the space that we hold for them or honor the plans, the intentionality, it does create a sour experience, which creates drama. So you could talk to them. Why are you doing this? It makes me feel this way whatever it is, and try to remove the uncertainty. But if they're still inconsistent in their reliability, this is someone that may not be able to show up for you. And therefore, it's time to cut them out because the drama is too much. This next one, ugh, ugh, we know someone like this. We all know someone like this. And it's that person who cannot admit that they're wrong. They always have to have the last word. It is almost impossible to have a healthy conversation with them because if you disagree about anything, it can turn explosive. Yeah. If you want less drama, it's probably best to limit your time around this kind of person. Anyone who always needs to be right has not done any work to look at themselves. They refuse to own the fact that they may be a part of the problem most of the time, and they refuse to really realize that their trauma responses are deep, right? They refuse to understand that there is more to life than black and white thinking and that there's always gray in every situation. And if you really want to eliminate drama, it is seriously time to limit your time around those people. In the same breath, if they're never wrong, they also will never apologize for anything. What's the saying? To err is human. All humans screw up. We all have something to apologize for because we all make errors. People who can't admit that they've made errors, that they make mistakes, that they can't apologize are just emotionally immature. They don't have a great sense of self-authority, and they don't really know who they are, what they value, what they believe in. They just know that your response is none of their problem. <laughs> if somebody is making an impact on you and they're clearly showing up in a way that is harmful and negative, they are making an impact. You get to choose how you connect to it and how it disrupts your life. But if somebody's doing something, then you have to be aware and you have to have a little self-understanding and know that you're not perfect and that it's okay to apologize. And if you don't have that awareness, you probably aren't that deserving of the relationships you're in in the first place. And I hate to say it like that. It's very cut, dry, cold even, but it's true. If you're not willing to do the work and you're engaging with someone who has... It's important for the person who's done the work to put the boundary in place, right? And it's this type of personality that leads us into the next one, the next drama stir, creator, whatever you want to call it. And it is those people who are master manipulators. They're great at mind games. They'll twist your words. They'll make you doubt your thoughts and feelings just to suit their own agenda. 
This is a massively toxic behavior, and it's one you should steer clear of for your own mental well-being, but also know that it is a shitstorm of drama. <laughs> Sorry, but it is. If somebody is willing to manipulate you and they have no qualms about doing so, you do not need that person in your life. They are looking for a target. They're looking for their own agenda to be suited. They are looking for someone to feed them with validations. True or false doesn't matter to them, but it's something that is so unhealthy. So if you are engaging in these kind of relationships, it is 100% necessary to step out. On a lower level, there is also the experience of those people who are unwilling to really validate your feelings. These people don't have to be master manipulators. These are just people who don't respect emotions. They don't have a lot of emotional intelligence. And so it's really hard to be understood in these relationships. But understand, your feelings are always valid. And anyone who's willing to dismiss them or make them feel less important is not somebody you really want to engage with at a high level, meaning you don't want to have a very serious relationship with those people because you're not going to be heard. You're not going to be witnessed. In fact, you may be dismissed more than you are shown up for. And so if you are around someone who is willing to dismiss your feelings at every turn, you're not in a space of healthy respect, healthy safety, healthy regard. You're not in a healthy relationship. Now, with all of those, you're probably saying, oh my gosh, I just lost half of my friends. <laughs> and maybe that's the truth. And if so, I'm sorry. But I want you to kind of also be given some mm, key pointers as to how to step away or how to change the relationship. Because walking away from any relationship is a tough decision and it's not something to be made lightly of, right? And I want you to really ask yourself, am I doing this because I'm trying to make myself mentally and emotionally better? Or am I doing this because I'm just sick of people's crap? <laughs> Either way, we have to kind of decide what is this going to do for me, right? Because some people really would rather have these relationships than be lonely, which is a whole other conversation. Please call me. We need to talk. <laughs> but we want to get into a space where we do have supportive people around us. And you do have those people. OK, you do. But we want to be able to step away in a way that cares for the self. So how do we step away? We have to walk away from the relationships in a healthy manner, knowing what the outcome is for us. Why is it important and what do we need from the outcome? So let me give you some little pieces, key pointers, like I just said. First is to step out of denial. And that is what the entire point of this conversation has been. If you know that you are in any of these experiences, the first step to solving the problem is to look it straight in the face. Do you need to end a certain relationship? What is it going to do for you? If you're stepping across a canyon from denial to acceptance, that is a huge witnessing of what you need and want for the self. So you have to do it. You have to get into acceptance so that you know what you are looking for in an outcome. The next thing that you can do is keep a log of your emotions. I say this quite often, but writing down your feelings is massively important. It gives you a framework of looking at your feelings from a different space. It allows you to get out of the fear, the scaredness, the anxiety. It helps you bring down your blood pressure. It improves the mood. It gives you a better sense of direction. So you have to do that, right? Identify what you're feeling and putting it on paper so that you know this is the healthiest step for you. The healthiest next step is to identify the perks. Toxic relationships cause toxic feelings. So get out your journal, write them down, or do whatever you need to in order to come to some kind of understanding of what you're going to gain by letting go of the drama. 
whatever your reason, write down the benefit of being able to make this move for yourself. The next thing I want you to think about is how will you fill the hole? Sometimes when we let go of certain people or relationships, there's this massive hole. The toxic relationship has become our home and we feel like we have lost everything. First and foremost, you're stronger than you ever think you are, okay? But I want you to know that you need support. When you let go of things that are not good for you, we have to fill it up with something that is. So what do you need to do? Do you need to reach out to a friend, to a therapist, to a family member that maybe you've let go of because of these kind of relationships and engage in those experiences? Fill the gap, fill the hole. Very important. The next thing because you're filling the hole, is to surround yourself with people who are positive. Refresh your outlook and make sure that you are around people who build you up. Be around the people who give you the courage to step outside of what you've been experiencing. Be around the people who want to cheer you on. Very important to do that. And then make sure that you are treating yourself. And I don't mean financially by going out and spending a bunch of money, but I mean treating yourself with the tactics that are going to build you up. Going to a yoga class, reading your favorite book, filling the hole with something that's going to build your mental awareness, your emotional strength, that does something to help ease all of the problems, increases your motivation, and helps you reach what you want. We want to be able to look at the reward of being able to feel good. Something that often occurs when we're letting go of toxic relationships is guilt. And you need to be able to heal your guilt. You may feel guilty for hurting someone else or staying in a relationship you knew was over long before you actually left. Or thinking about the fact that you hurt your children or whatever it is, whatever the reason you feel guilt for, the first thing that you have to do is get into a space of self-forgiveness. Forgiveness Forgiveness can be something that is, I'm not wanting to remove the situation, but instead being okay with knowing that the situation had to occur and that you did your best. And whatever comes from it is what is supposed to be. That is a very hard thing to grasp for a lot of people, but you must because it can help you emotionally and physically. It's going to reduce your anxiety, reduce your depression, reduce your stress, and it's going to gain in your happiness factor. And of course, you're going to let go of the drama. The next and last thing is to allow yourself peace and rest. Most relationships that are, you know, pretty significant, when there's a break, it causes us to have a big emotional break too. And when there is a toxic relationship of any kind, low level or high level, we do need to give ourselves a little space and time to heal. It takes energy to withdraw from situations And that same energy that it takes to withdraw has to be put on ourselves in order to heal how we're feeling. We have to look at it and say, you know what? I'm not going to do that again. I don't want to feel that way again. And so instead, I'm going to actually just decide what do I need to do to make myself feel better, to get on track, to not allow these kind of behaviors and relationships to rebuild in my life, but instead, how can I choose me? Some relationships leave you with gaps and holes, but that doesn't mean it has to leave you feeling broken. If drama is a constant part of your life, you have the ability to stop the drama train. You have the ability to say, no, thank you. You have the ability to not create it if you're the one who is the perpetrator here, right? If we want to grow in our self-authority, in our authenticity, with our 
full abilities intact, we have to step out of the things that work against us. And when we do that, we give ourselves the pathway, the ability, the strength, the resiliency, the grace, and the permission to do exactly what we need to. And that is the essential step into getting our lives together. Thank you so much for listening to the Get Your Life Together Girl podcast. If you're seeking daily inspiration and additional tools and tips, follow me on social media at Get Your Life Together Girl on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Hopper, Pinterest, Insight Timer, and now Threads. You can visit my show notes, my blog, and my website at GetYourLifeTogetherGirl.com. I invite you to please review this podcast as it puts our show in front of others who may be in need of this kind of grounded lessons and information. I can't thank you enough for being a valuable member of this community. Until next time, be kind to yourself and others.